Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're back again to complete another tutorial. And today we're going to be talking about bouncing chemical equations. Now, bouncing chemical equations happens to be one of the harder concepts for people to understand. But hopefully in this tutorial, we can break it down, make it simple and easy enough for you to be able to bounce a chemical equation just like that. So let's, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get started. Now, when we talk about bouncing chemical equations, we are going to be looking at the law of conservation of matter, which states that atoms are neither created nor destroyed in the chemical reaction. And what this means is that in the chemical reaction, you must have the same number of atoms in the reactants and the same number of atoms in the products. So for example, if you look at the picture below, there are four hydrogen in the reactant side, on this left side. There are two oxygen on this reactant side. Now if we look, this is our yield sign, but this yield sign shows that a chemical reaction is taking place. And if we look after the chemical reaction is taking place, we still have two oxygen. Just like we had in our reactants. And we also have four hydrogen, and it's shown right here. We also have four hydrogen in our products, just like shown in our reactants as well. So this is perfectly demonstrated. Atoms were not created or destroyed in this chemical reaction. And we also have the same number of atoms in our reactants as we do in our products. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the symbols that are used in bouncing chemical equations. The first thing we want to look at is these numbers that are at the bottom they are below the element symbol. And since they are below, we call these subscripts. So subscripts, these are the numbers below. And these tell how many you have of each element. And if we look at our numbers up top, these numbers are called our coefficients. Now, our coefficients are the numbers that you can change in order to balance your chemical equations. You cannot change your subscripts to balance the chemical equation. So the only ones you can change are your coefficients. So those will be your numbers up top. This arrow in the middle is your yield sign. And what the yield sign shows or symbolizes that there is a chemical reaction that takes place. So we have our reactants on this side these are our reactants and then after our chemical reaction right here we have our products so all of these these are our products the same thing is noted down here we have our reactants carbon hydrogen and oxygen on the left hand side and we put how many of reactants we have before the chemical reaction and then on our product side we have the same thing carbon hydrogen and oxygen they're all they're going to be the same elements on each side why because remember matter cannot be created or destroyed so now let's go ahead and take a look at our next thing so let's look at our balanced chemical equations so you must have the same number of atoms on both sides. Is this equation above balance? Well, let's take a look at it. We have one mercury over here. We have one oxygen on this left-hand side and our reactant side. And I'll go ahead and put an R over here for reactants. And then let's look for our product side. We have one mercury over here, and we have two oxygens. But one thing you can tell is that our mercuries are fine, but our oxygens are not balanced. So is this equation balanced? No, it is not. So now let's take a look at how to balance chemical equations. So in order to balance chemical equations, we have to do take five simple steps. First, we write the chemical equation for the reaction. Second, we list the atoms in the reactants. The atoms in the reactants are going to be on the left side. So they're going to be in front of that yield sign. So left side. And then list the atoms in the products. The atoms in the products, they are going to be on the right side of the yield sign. And then we add coefficients, which are the numbers up top, in order to balance the equation. And then, last but not least, we check to make sure our equation is balanced. So let's practice this. 
So now, here's that problem from earlier, and we already stated that this problem is not, this chemical equation is not balanced because we don't have the same amount of elements on each side. But we can add coefficients to balance it. So the first thing we had to do was write our chemical equation. The second thing we had to do, it lists our number of reactants. So we have one mercury over here, we have one oxygen over here and then we list our number of products so once again we have one mercury right here we only have we have two oxygen over here now since it's our oxygens that are not balanced this is going to be the first thing that we start with or the first thing that we attack so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a two right here when we put that two here that two gets distributed to mercury and to oxygen and when it distributes it is multiplying so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross out this one and I'm going to put my, my new number of mercuries. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my oxygen, cross out that one and put my new number of oxygen, which is going to be two. And then I'm going to come over here to the product side. I have two mercury over here. I only have one right here. I want to have two mercury over here. So I put a two right here. That changes this to a two. And then if you notice, I have two oxygen over here and two oxygen over here, two mercury over here and two mercury over here. And is our chemical equation balanced? Yes, it is. So now let's take a look at another one. Let's practice. Ladies and gentlemen, you have 30 seconds to go ahead and set up your chemical equation and balance it. And I will pause the video starting now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So now, remember our steps. First, you had to write the chemical equation down. Second, you had to list the number of reactants and the number of products. So on our reactant side, we have two nitrogen and we have two hydrogen. On our product side, we have one nitrogen and we have three hydrogen. So now, if I have two nitrogen over here and only one nitrogen over here, I want to make sure that I have the same number of nitrogen. So I'm going to put a two right here. So hopefully this is what you did on your paper. And remember, this two gets distributed. It gets multiplied by nitrogen and hydrogen. So now I have two nitrogen. And remember, since I'm distributing and it's multiplying, this two is going to multiply this by this three. Two times three is going to give us six. Now if we come over here on the left hand side, we have two nitrogen over here. We have two nitrogen on our product side, which is fine. But we have two hydrogen right here and we have six hydrogen right here. The key question here is what do I multiply this two by in order to get six? And you guessed it, the correct answer is three. So now when I multiply this two times this three, we have six hydrogen. So now we have two nitrogens on each side. We have six hydrogen on each side. Our chemical equation is now balanced. Let's practice another one. You have 30 seconds to go ahead and set up your problem and balance it. And I'll pause the video now. So we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we're going to follow our steps. We wrote our chemical equation. We're going to put our reactants on our left-hand side. And we're going to put our products on our right hand side so I just go ahead and identify how many we have of each and you can already tell that we have a different number of reactants and products for phosphorus and for oxygen so let's start off with phosphorus since they're the first ones that are not balanced I have four phosphorus over here I only have two right here what can I multiply this two by to get me four and our answer would be two and remember, when I multiply, it distributes. So not only does it go to phosphorus, which phosphorus now has four, because two times two is four, but it also, that two distributes also to oxygen. So now it's two times three, and that gives us six. Now if I notice my phosphorus are fine, I can leave this blank right here, or I can put a one. But it would be the same thing, because one times four would still give me four. And now with my oxygen, two, two times what number would give me six and we have three so once I change that 
we have four phosphorus on each side we have six oxygen on each side and so now our chemical equation is balanced let's check out one more just to make sure that we have the right concepts in mind and we know how to balance our chemical equations so I, will, I give you 30 seconds starting now okay we're back again ladies and gentlemen once again we're going to go ahead and set up our chemical equation we're going to put our reactants on the left hand side which we have one carbon we have four fluorine and then we have two bromine on our reactant side on our product side we have one carbon we have two fluorine and I went ahead and put them beside each other instead of putting them out of order because it makes it easier to balance and then I we have four bromine right here so now let's go ahead and take a look our carbons are balanced so let's move on to our fluorines I have four over here I only have two over here so two times what would give me four and two times two would give me four so cross that out now fluorines are balanced now let's take a look at our bromines our bromines we have four over here we only have two right here so two times what will give me four that would be two cross that out it gives us four so now let's take a look we have one carbon on each side we have four fluorines on each side and we have four bromine on each side and we could leave these blank or we can put a one in front of these and it would still mean the same thing. So at this present point in time, ladies and gentlemen, our chemical equation is balanced. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this tutorial was helpful and I hope it was easy for you to understand and help you to balance chemical equations. Thanks for you. Thank you for all your time. I'm Chavis Spivey signing off with my son, Jordan Spivey signing off. And once again, remember, please subscribe and hit the like button. And have a wonderful, awesome day. Take care. Peace.